In podcast episode 72, I had an engaging conversation with Dr. Daniel Bellavi, a professor at the University of Applied Health Sciences in Bochum, Germany. Daniel, who completed his PhD in rehabilitation science and electrical engineering at the University of Queensland in Brisbane, Australia, has authored over 150 published papers. His research focuses on muscle, bone and joint health, offering groundbreaking insights into back pain. His work has also been frequently cited in PhysioTutor's content. This episode explored his extensive research on low back pain, covering a wide range of topics. We began by examining Daniel's research on intervertebral disc health and injuries, particularly in astronauts. He explained that extended periods in space expose tissues like intervertebral discs to mechanical unloading, compromising musculoskeletal health. This deloading causes overhydration of the discs, heightening the risk of injury upon returning to Earth. Daniel drew parallels between astronauts and ordinary people, noting that intervertebral discs are similarly overhydrated after sleep, increasing the risk of disc injuries in the morning. Daniel emphasized the importance of mechanical loading for disc health. The inner parts of intervertebral discs lack direct blood supply, relying on nutrient exchange through the end plates. This process depends on regular cyclic loading. He described how intervertebral discs thrive within an optimal range of loading, where too little or too much can be harmful. For instance, while activities like running can benefit disc structure, some high-impact sports might have adverse effects, which highlights the complex interplay between lifestyle, activity levels and disc health. Our conversation then shifted to Daniel's research on non-specific low back pain, where treatment guidelines often fail to yield effective outcomes. His team is conducting a large-scale study to identify clinically relevant subgroups within this patient population using parameters like strength, psychosocial factors, and central, central nervous system markers. By employing advanced methods like AI and MI, the research aims to classify patients more precisely. These subgroups could lead to targeted treatments and better outcomes. We also discussed sacroiliac joint-related low back pain and the diagnostic reliability of the cluster of Laslet. While positive results only marginally increase the likelihood of sacroiliac joint involvement, negative results reliably rule it out in 90% of the cases. This allows practitioners to exclude the sacroiliac joint as a source of pain when the tests are negative. Daniel noted the disconnect between research and practice, citing widespread use of interventions like lumbar traction despite limited evidence supporting their efficacy. He continues to teach such techniques to prepare students for real-world expectations and adherence to guidelines while advocating for better integration of evidence-based practices. When discussing causes of back pain, Daniel shared his insights from his research on physical exposures like heavy lifting, sitting, standing, vibration and posture. While certain po exposures were associated with back pain, the data didn't establish strong causal links. For example, vibration exposure showed associations, but prolonged sitting or poor posture did not. Daniel debunked the belief that sitting is a primary cause of back pain, advocating for regular movement instead. His phrase, the best posture is your next posture, shifts focus from rigid postural recommendations to dynamic activity as a more effective strategy. Daniel's team also examined the deconditioning hypothesis, which posits that reduced activity in people with back pain leads to functional decline and worsens their condition. However, their finding challenged this idea. Objective performance measures like jump height and grip strength showed no significant difference between individuals with and without back pain, despite self-reported reductions in activity. This suggests that perceptions of capability may be more affected by back pain than actual functioning. Daniel concluded that simplified hypotheses like the deconditioning often fail to capture the complexity of back pain. Another area of interest was the role of contextual effects in pain treatment. Daniel's team analyzed factors like specific treatment effects, natural symptom improvement 
and contextual influences such as patient and therapist beliefs. They found contextual effects contributed modest improvements on a 100-point visual analog scale, though smaller than gains from exercise-based treatments. Daniel highlighted their importance, but acknowledged challenges in reliably harnessing them in practice due to limited evidence quality. We also discussed a network meta-analysis comparing exercise modalities for chronic back pain, including Pilates, aerobic exercise, strengthening, stretching, and hydrotherapy. Most exercise types were similarly effective, aligning with findings from a Cochrane study. However, Pilates appeared to have the largest effect, which Daniel attributed to study biases rather than inherent superiority. Stretching seemed less effective, possibly due to underrepresentation or participant perceptions. He noted that effective stretching could still be as beneficial as other exercises. Our conversation concluded on a reflective note, with Daniel expressing interest in improving physiotherapy research, supporting new talent and optimizing resources for maximum impact. He sees research as part of a larger philosophical pursuit of meaningful work. Daniel also invited listeners interested in pursuing a PhD in Germany to reach out. Okay, this was a brief summary of podcast episode 71 on low back pain with Dr. Daniel Bellavi. I hope this raised your curiosity to listen to the whole episode. And if you would like to have more resources, download our PhysioTutors app to listen to the podcast episode, even in your own language. And also get access to the transcript and infographic as a premium member. As always, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in another video. Bye.